Hello, hello. Welcome to Courage Becomes Her, where we connect and share real life stories. I'll talk with women whom I love and I'm inspired by women who are experiencing life just like you and me. I'm excited for us to gather together and cultivate confidence, courage, and joy in life and work. Well, hello, friends. Thank you for joining me for this bonus episode of Courage Becomes Her, where we're continuing our Summer Reads series. So today I have with me Sue Detweiler. Sue is a global prophetic speaker, revivalist, author, and the host of the Healing Rain podcast, which is listened to in 135 nations. Wow, so incredible. She is ordained with the Foursquare Church and is frequently featured in Charisma Magazine, as well as on multiple different television networks and radio stations. She holds a Master's of Divinity from Vanderbilt University and is currently pursuing her doctorate. Sue serves as the Executive Director of Life Bridge Global and lives with her husband, Wayne, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and they are parents of six and grandparents of eight. So in today's bonus episode, we are talking about Sue's newest book, Healing Rain, Immersing Yourself in Christ's Love to Find Wholeness of Mind, Body, and Heart. So in the book and in our conversation, Sue talks about her experiences of being being healed from chronic pain and chronic sickness, including autoimmune disease. And she talks about the strategies that she used in her own life for healing and wholeness. And we have a really wonderful conversation about how self-pity is destructive to our ability to heal. I really appreciate the insights that she shares about that. We also have a wonderful conversation around the concept of what it means to uh, look at our, our emotional health as well as our physical health and the cues that our physical health gives us about our emotional health. I just really appreciate some insights that she shares about that. So in this conversation, what I think I appreciate most about it is that she calls us to have courage to believe that we too can receive healing physically, mentally, and emotionally. And just such a important and valuable conversation. And I'm really grateful to have her join me today to talk about her new book, Healing Rain. Well, Sue, thank you so much for joining me for this conversation for Courage Becomes Her. I'm delighted to meet you and to be able to learn from you and your book, which we'll talk about in a moment. So thank you. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, it's a joy. And it's fun because I'm coming to you from Brazil. Yes. So that's fun. That is that, fun. That's when the interview is happening. Yes. No. And the uh, miracle of technology that it is, how incredible that that has made the way for us to have that conversation. So I appreciate that so much. So speaking of, so Brazil is not home. So where is home? And tell us a little bit about home life, family life, personal life. Well, uh, I grew up a Mennonite farm girl until God called me into ministry. And my husband and I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and planted our first church when I was 22. Wow. Uh, we pastored for 28 years in Nashville, and we raised four daughters, and we adopted two sons from Brazil. Um, and now after seeing a vision and I, I, let me just say it this way, a picture of the state of Texas surrounded in flames after that encounter with Jesus, wow. we moved to Dallas, Texas, and that's now where we live. And I now have not only the six children, but eight grandchildren and counting. Oh my gosh. I love that. Well, that's absolutely I do wonderful. Too. Yeah. It's so fun. Mm, I, I'm sure it makes for a very, very full and busy life for sure. So, 
All right. Um, all of the guests of Courage Becomes Her respond to the question, what is a current obsession of yours? So it can be in any genre, food, app, podcast, product, anything. Well, I think what's currently passionate in my heart uh, is being available to travel to the nations of the earth. Mm. And it was something that I, I had spent some time in Belize, Central America, three months when I was 18. Wow. And I fell in love with what it meant to live your life fully available to God in the nations. Hmm. But I had already been dating this wonderful man. And I heard the Lord say, go home and marry that man. And in the midst of raising children, part of what I heard the Lord say, because your passion for the nations, you have it. Mm. But I had a very clear word, lay your life down for your children. Mm. And I will send not only you, but your children to the nations as well. Um, But I just need to say it was still a surprise because you forget about those words. And now I'm a meanie. And fairly recently, I had an encounter with Jesus where it was clear it was time to lay down pastoral ministry, Mm -hmm. uh, begin a nonprofit. And for me, that means that almost every month I'm traveling to a different nation in the world. Wow. And I'm passionate about it because I see God just working miracles as I give him my yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so beautiful. So our next question, which totally goes with what you just said, is what has filled your cup in the last day or week or so? Oh, there's a number of things that that fill my cup. Um, You know, worship and prayer is something that fills my cup. Mm. And I will find myself worshiping. um, My husband and I... uh, are a mom and a dad in the spirit. (laughs) And yet we found ourselves at a 20 something church. um, (laughs) And, and the passion for worship and prayer Mm. has been transformative. And I will find myself worshiping um, and praying and, um, It really does fill a joy place in my life. Mm. Mm. Uh, Beautiful. But I don't know which one's more. It's different. But boy, do my grandchildren fill a joy cup. (laughs) I mean, oh, my goodness. They are so cute. There's eight of them. There's six and under. And um, little Andrew. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm trying to think where I was. I was either in the continent of Africa or Estonia, but he found out that people can travel by rocket. Okay. So he tells his dad, well, Mimi's going to fly a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> and I oh, thought, oh, so my precious. grandkids think I can do anything. I just, I love my grandchildren and the joy. It's multiplied joy seeing my kids do such a good job raising their children. Mm, I love that. That's very, very special indeed. So we're going to talk about your book in just a second. But before we jump into that, tell me what's a book that has transformed your life? Mm, Oh my goodness. There's so many You know, I'm thinking about some of Andrew Murray's books, Mm -hmm. like there's several of them on prayer. He also wrote a book about humility. Mm -hmm. um, And uh, that book was very transformative. There's an A.W. Tozer book um, that we actually, I taught systematic theology for a decade, and I would use that book as an extra book in one of the theology classes, because it talks about the attributes of God. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I remember teaching at one time and there are probably 50 students in the room, but the presence of God came into the room in such 
a strong way that we were all on the floor weeping really in repentance to God. There's something about the holiness of God that mm. um, A.W. Tozer just is able to speak about. Yeah. Um, there's many, many more, but those are a couple that have been transformative. Yeah. Uh, Watchman's knee book, you know, the normal Christian life. Yeah. Um, mm. We use that in uh, as an additional book in in the Romans class. And wow, some of his insights about what it means to die, Mm. um, you know, so that you can live huge, huge insights and um, transformative in my own life. Mm, So good. Thank you. Well, thank you for letting us get to know you a little bit. So Healing Rain is the title of your book, Immersing Yourself in Christ's Love to Find Wholeness of Mind, Body, and Heart. So you personally have experienced, I I just honestly, I couldn't believe your story, chronic pain, chronic sickness, chronic illness, as well as extreme stress and burnout, trauma from abuse, as well as being saved from a house fire. So all of these things that are just crazy, hard, scary, unexpected, all of those things. And so in the book, you walk us through some of your experiences and your own healing as it pertained to many of those that I just said. And all with the goal of helping us to be able to see how we can have healing and in our own lives and in our own journeys. And you have some incredible insights that I want to talk about in a moment. But as I was reading the book, kind of the first big thought that I had is as a Western world, healing is a foreign concept to many of us (laughs) or a concept that is difficult to believe in, to actually think exists. So I'd love to get your insights just a little bit on why do you think we have such a hard time believing in healing? Yeah, well, I did talk about it because sometimes when you are physically experiencing symptoms, And when you go to the doctor, which a lot of people that deal with autoimmune things that I did, Hashimoto's, aloe, Sophia, Retta, several of them. But part of what will happen is they will say, you know, this, there's no cure for this. Mm -hmm. This is something that you just need to manage. You know, there's a lot of diseases today that that, you know, when they began giving me thyroid medicine that, you know, you're going to need to take that all of your life. Yeah. Uh, You know, there are different things like that. And what can happen is that can actually conflict sometimes with what we read in the scripture. Yeah. Uh, But when your personal experience is sickness and you're, you're feeling it, you can end up embracing almost, um, uh, a victim mentality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I would find myself doing that truthfully for a couple of years Mm -hmm. because I would spend so much time tracing my history with how bad it's been. That if you think about when you talk about everything you've gone through, you you tend to magnify it. It's like, I've done this. I've gone through Mm -hmm. this. I've gone through this. And by that time you have absolutely no faith. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, in God. And so somehow what I try to do in healing brain is I try to be real and authentic and transparent about the journey, yeah. but at the same time, bring the word of God to bear yeah. and, and also the transformation that's needed in our mind, in our heart and A couple of exciting stories is I actually, I do additional teaching that are videos that are available to people, but I did that at, in a church setting. So I taught this book in a church setting and there was quite a few people that didn't realize, oh my goodness, I'm dealing with these physical symptoms, but oh, look here, there's 
inner healing that I haven't addressed. There are deeper needs in my trauma and not realizing that God made us body, mind, soul, spirit, Mm -hmm. and they all go together. So I think um, the transformation that comes when the word of God is applied personally um, and strategically with prophetic precision and truth, I do believe that you are going to get the victory and the healing when you do that. Mm. That's good. Thank you very much. You said something a moment ago that you also talk about in the book. You uh, you basically say, I think you say it, the self-pity is destructive. And you said it a moment ago <laughs> of it magnifies it. You know, you move to a place of not having faith. And I think that there's a big piece in there for us to marinate on. Yes. Yes. So especially in the USA. Yeah. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about that. Um, Well, the enemy of our souls, of our hearts, he wants to isolate us. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that the enemy will plant thoughts in our minds and there'll be structures and strongholds Mm -hmm. that allow those thoughts to hide. Mm -hmm. Um, So we don't even know it's an enemy thought, you know, we embrace it as our own. Um, So there, there's a real battle for the mind that's going on in the midst of all of this. And I think sometimes we don't realize we're in a battle. We're just Mm -hmm. feeling sick. Yeah. Um, And one thing that I don't like, and I purposefully try to combat that, I don't like it if people try to act like, oh, I'm healed, Mm -hmm. you know, but they're really not, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I try to tell stories of both of the miraculous healing and the times that we prayed and believed and it didn't work out like we thought it was going to. Yeah, Uh, because that's our human experience. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's important to be true to the human experience. However, if it's you, like you're the one dealing with this. Yeah, I just want to encourage you that self pity will make it worse. Yeah, And it can end up being that you can be forecasting your future through Mm. this self-pity. And if you can shift your mindset and agree with God, rather than the report of the enemy, Mm -hmm. you are going to find healing and miracles padding your path as you walk with him. Yeah, that's so good. And I think, I mean, we know that scripturally there's a place for lament and that that lament is appropriate and we're called to lament, but it definitely can cross over to that place of, you know, just believing the false narratives like you just talked about. So I appreciate that. One of the scriptures I try to talk about is how uh, Jesus warned the disciples and he's, he's telling them, hey, I'm going to be crucified, but don't let sorrow get a hold of your heart. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it get mm. agitated. Yeah. And then you look at it in Luke and literally they fell asleep. Mm-hmm. You know, that was their temptation. And I think that sometimes what happens in our lives is that we go through sorrow And it impacts our soul to the point that it's like we fall asleep. Mm. It's like we we don't live the fullness of our capacity because Mm. rather than um, positioning our heart to be healed, Mm -hmm. you know, that we're taking it, our emotions to the Lord. And I'm thinking of the Philippians passage where it talks about how we suffer with him, yeah. but then it doesn't stop there. It moves to resurrection. We encounter his resurrection. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to learn how to bring our suffering to Jesus rather than fall asleep in our suffering. 
That's so good. So good. In a recent podcast episode with a friend of mine, Laura, who experienced stillbirth of her first child, she talked about how she and her husband actively work to not get stuck in their grief. And I think that's definitely what you're describing, that we can get to a place where we just are stuck there. We can't, can't get out, can't find a way out. So I really appreciate that perspective. And then God sends others, praise God, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. you know, because all of us have been stuck at a time at times. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so good. You alluded to it a moment ago, but one of the connections that you draw in the book that I absolutely love is this idea that our emotional pain, our emotional stress is connected with our physical pain. And I think you say it another way of your heart issue has physical impact. So talk a little bit more about that connection, because I think that's something that I've seen in my coaching with clients over the years that we don't make that connection of realizing when there's something physically happening for us that it very likely is tied to something that's emotionally happening for us. Well, I take time in the book to look at the heart from the Hebraic standpoint Mm -hmm. because the Hebrews really saw the heart as our essence of who we are. You know, not only the places where we made choice with our will, you know, our emotions, Um, And there's something about the talk about the heart um, that helps us in this journey, because the Greeks would talk more about body, mind, soul, Mm -hmm. spirit, Mm -hmm. you know, it's both ways of looking at it are relative, but when you just simplify it and talk about heart healing, Mm. it helps you get to the essence of who you are. Yeah. And we're so complex, you know, we're so miraculously woven together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, I, I did see like a year ago when I was in Brazil, I was ministering and it was a pastor's conference. And one night there's a whole line of men behind me, you know, there's a whole bunch of men and women ministering, but I mean, all these men are just, they are lining up in my line. They're pastors. Hmm. And I literally, while I'm praying, it was like I could see um, like a a red hand, you know, like the hand of God just going and massaging their hearts. Hmm. And sometimes, you know, as I'm seeing that picture, sometimes they would fall down in the spirit and they'd be there for an hour you know, Mm. just encountering the presence of God. And there are times that I think an encounter can shift us, you know, because when we encounter Jesus and we go to that deeper level Mm. of, okay, God, I'm here before you, the essence of who I am, I'm here before you. He can actually, and what I saw him doing in the spiritual realm, it was like he was massaging hearts and he, the toxins were leaving, Mm -hmm. you know, because our hearts um, and in our bodies, in the physical body, we know that our liver does this, you know, Mm -hmm. our liver Mm -hmm. will hold toxins and it will hold toxic emotions and it will hold toxins from environment, you know, Mm -hmm. and they're, but the liver can regenerate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so I really believe that somehow we have got to position our lives to be under his healing reign, mm. to be soaked in our presence, because there's ways that he can heal us that we can't do it yeah. ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> we oh. can position ourselves to receive the healing. Yeah. Um, mm. But he's the healer. Mm. 
That's so good. I appreciate that so much. Hello, friends. Just interrupting this conversation with Sue super quickly for two things. First and foremost, you know that Baker Books is offering two copies of Sue's new book, Healing Rain, to the listeners of Courage Becomes Her. All that you need to do to enter to win is go to my Instagram, Laurel Emery on Instagram, and the July 21st post and enter to win through there. Super easy to do that. I'd love it if you would also think of the woman in your life who might be suffering from chronic pain, sickness, or illness and share today's episode with her. I know that Sue's wisdom and insights would bring hope and encouragement to that woman in your life. So you do, you call out some, I'm kind of labeling them as strategies. That's not really the word that you use, but just ways that we can invite that healing, that wholeness. And a couple of them, honestly, I don't think that I've heard many people talk about, you know, in a real public way. So, um, and some of them I absolutely love. So there's a couple that I want to talk about, but the first one is you talk about taking communion, which is so just surprising to me in many senses, because I think it's so, for many of us, it's just such a a liturgical response and we're not actively thinking about the uh, the power in communion. So talk a little bit about that cuz that again that was a, a real surprising one for me. Well, this came about really, I mean, what marked my life is my daughter Hannah had uh she had had a miscarriage, had a baby, and then she was pregnant. And she was bleeding, you know, Mm -hmm. and she was 95% sure that she was going to lose this baby. And she'd lost one before, Mm -hmm. you know, so she's headed to the hospital and like, I'm praying through the night and my husband wakes up and we took communion. Now I had already been taking communion daily at that point, Mm -hmm. but we took communion together and we claimed the life of our eighth grandchild. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I remember, um, I think I was writing this chapter um, before I had a contract on the book. So I just started writing it. And I get this text that mom, the baby's fine. And mm. it was something like a sub cryonic hemorrhage. I don't remember what it was called, Hmm. but she was at risk. But little Johnny now, Hmm. he not, she carried him full term and he's born. And I really, I really believe that God healed our grandbaby in the womb. Hmm. And I, I know that, you know, we suffer miscarriage. We suffer different things, Mm -hmm. but sometimes I think because we don't want to be disappointed, hmm. we don't actively take those things to the Lord in prayer. Hmm. And what's great about communion and when that becomes a regular part of your life, um, where like for us, we have the communion element setting out all the time. Hmm. And so my husband and I, you know, sometimes we're taking them individually. Sometimes we're taking them together, but Mm. my mother lives with us too. She's our 87 year old. She has a suite upstairs. She calls it her Eagle's nest, but she's taking communion every day. Um, And, you know, the, the upper room community at the same time, this was becoming so strong in my heart. I really believe it became strong there. And when you think about what we've been called to do and to remember, remember that by our, by his stripes we're healed. Mm -hmm. And I wrote some prayers in the book. I try to do this throughout is give tools, but like if somebody gets a hold and they just read those prayers, they're all based on scripture yeah. And it will impact your faith because you're reading the word of God, you're taking communion and you're applying it yeah. 
to your need for healing in your Mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Mm, So good. So good. I love that. It definitely, um, just called to my heart the, the need to do that more often, um, with an expectation, but also just with a desire to meet God there. So I appreciate that so much. Another one, uh, and is a little bit more common, but I think at least in the last 20 years has become a practice that has kind of fallen away. And you uh, mentioned it a moment ago, but you talk about meditating on God's attributes and on God's characteristics and how that, uh, you know, has been transformative for you in your healing and how you've seen it be so in other people's lives. So how, for those who maybe have either not ever had that as a practice or don't really know what to do or what it looks like, how would you provide a little bit of guidance to have that become a a regular practice and discipline for us? Yeah. You know, meditation is something that's really important in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about, I think it's Psalm 1 and the Hebrew word there is Hagah for meditate. Mm. And literally it means to chew on something. And, and you get this picture of the Jews at the wailing wall where they're literally they're they're like swaying back and forth, Mm. you know, Mm -hmm. and they're praying and like words are coming out of their mouth. And um, I, I think sometimes we, we miss the diligence of, um, both bringing the need that we have, but also the attribute that answers it. Yeah. Mm. You know, that Jesus is our healer. That's the focus of the book. Um, But it's his nature. It's his character. And I think in the United States, we've bowed down. um, and, And by the way, I'm so grateful for medicine. And I have on my healing team is great doctors and nurses and, you know, Uh, however, we've made an altar of medical science. Mm. And when you're talking with doctors, there are plenty of times when they don't know what to do. Yeah. And there are plenty of times where medical doctors will say it was a miracle Mm. because there's someone beyond Mm -hmm. the medical reality and that's God. And I think we've got to anchor our mind on his nature, his character, Mm -hmm. because the enemy will lie to us in any area that we're not strong in. Yeah. Yeah. I know one of the classes I taught when I was teaching in a school of ministry was the names of God. You know, just Mm -hmm. really remembering and meditating and claiming. So I think in the meditation, because make sure I answered your question well, Eastern meditation is like empty your mind. Yeah. You know, like, which is the opposite of Christian meditation. Christian meditation is focus your mind, Mm -hmm. you know. Focus your mind on what's noble, what's too true. Philippians 4 8. You know, focus your mind. But mm. then what I think really activates it in people is when you bring that meditation to the spoken word, mm-hmm. you know, the declarative word. Yeah. And I, by the way, I do know that there are new agers. That it's almost like we don't want to go to an extreme. And so people stay away from things, you know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but like they call themselves healers when the reality is Christians, we should be the healers, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, (laughs) we have mm -hmm. the word of God. Mm -hmm. Um, But I know that new agers will talk about manifest your destiny Uh and, you know, it's way out there. Um, And yet, how do how do I put this? God has set principles in order Mm. about speaking his word. And he said in Joel three, I think it is, let the weak say they are strong. Yeah. Yeah. And the reality is their personal experiences, they're weak. 
Mm-hmm. But in faith, they're to say they're strong. Mm-hmm. And then in Romans 4, 3, I think it is, you know, um, call that which is not, you know, and, you know, speak, at, uh, Mark 11, uh, speak to the mountain. And it will move. So we've got all these scriptural examples of how you take the meditation and you engage the speaking. Hmm. And I believe there's great power in it. It's part of why I've tried to give written prayers. And I do a, a free download that's on my website called Seven Keys to Divine Healing. And you can download that. And I have some spoken prayers you know that you can speak out for your healing Mm -hmm. i i know i have one prayer set that's literally going through the whole all your created systems Mm -hmm. body systems um and that's something that i do because you ask how does that look in practice yeah yeah i literally i have on my phone declarations Mm. so there are different areas in my life where i'm believing for you know one of them for me is weight loss you know Mm. after going through the hashimoto's i've lost weight but then i got stuck again Mm. you know where i'm like holding holding steady but i still have more weight to lose so i have declarations that i will say that come from scripture study you know and they're scripture reference but i will speak those out of my mind and that me hearing it helps me meditate on it but it helps mm. me speak it helps me live it i also have declarations on my phone that my husband and i will often pray this together because you know here we are beginning a nonprofit and needing to be fully funded to answer God's call and yeah. to do it in a different way, you know, since we no longer have a pastor's salary, yeah. but for us to be fully supported and, and God has used it. And part of why meditation is so helpful is it, it's like, it, you know, if I could reach out and shake your shoulders and say, okay, believe mm. the word of God, it helps me or it helps you get focused on what God is saying and what is truly true. Mm, That's so good. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. Another one, and you alluded to it or mentioned it just super quick a moment ago, but you talk about the importance of a healing team. And one of the reasons why I started this podcast was really to provide a community for women to be able to come together and talk about what's going on in their lives and to have a place of safety. And you talk about that of safe people and safe places to heal and just the importance, the criticality of that. So talk a little bit more about like that to me also was kind of a little bit of an abnormal one to, to talk about and to include maybe more so about the safe place than about the safe people. But tell us just a little bit more about that. Well, it's a really, I mean, it's a really big chunk, but let me just say a couple things about it. When you say healing team, one thing that that does is it snaps you out of the focus that everything's going to be terrible. Mm. You know, if you're in the middle and you have a child that's in ICU or you have a cancer diagnosis or you have just uh, lost a child, you know, and you're going through the grief of that. um, One thing that that does is say healing team is it frames it in the positive. Mm-hmm. You are going through something very traumatic, very difficult. You can't go through it alone. Yeah. You need to have people that help you heal. And so, and often you need to, and if it's your own health, you know, there's different, you know, you need doctors, you need, there's all sorts of things that are part of your healing journey yeah. and just embracing it. So that's one part of it. 
in terms of the safety, safe people and safe places, um, we have an issue um, that we have some churches in the world that are not healthy churches, Mm -hmm. that they become toxic places. Mm -hmm. Um, And we want to be a part of emotionally healthy churches and we want to be emotionally healthy disciples yeah you know so there are just like there are companies you know sometimes a company is run by a narcissist and so the environment the working environment becomes toxic yeah and by the way toxic environments are really one of the places that have brought about a breakdown in people's health. Mm -hmm. Like that's Mm -hmm. one of the things, if you're in a toxic environment for a long period of time. um, And so, I mean, just learning to determine healthy and what's healthy for you. Um, Now I want to be careful about that because I think people are leaving the church at an epidemic Rate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that that's worse because there's more pajama Christians after COVID than before. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I really believe in being in the church and being a part of the church and not being isolated from the church. And I do pe- think people have gotten stuck in their destinies because at some point they were hurt. Mm-hmm. So now they don't feel like they can trust Wow. So that's part of the backdrop of safe people and safe places. Then you go to what I was addressing in my own journey was I lost my son Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. we had adopted Dre from Brazil at the age of 12. Um, He and his brother came from family line of mental illness and drug abuse. And yet God spoke to our hearts to adopt these little boys. They'd gone through just incredible trauma. Um, Well, my son Dre at the age of 23, um, he'd been free from drugs for about five months. Mm. Uh, But I got Uh, contacted by the coroner that he had a apparent drug overdose. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when I talk about this in the book, and I just have to talk about where I was at that point, I did not have the emotional energy to talk about it publicly. Mm -hmm. Like I knew that I couldn't answer everybody's questions, sure. you know, because at that point I'd already written books. And so I was very strategic about who I talked with and how I talked about it. Mm. And part of it is when you come to things like a drug overdose in our country, many times parents are blamed Mm -hmm. for the child's Mm -hmm. behavior yeah Yeah. Uh, that didn't happen as much with Wayne and I because our sons were adopted Mm. but the reality is if you're going through a lot of pain and it's a situation that just by sharing it people are going to blame you for it then I would say create a safe place where you don't have to do that. That's right. Yeah. You know, where you can share it, but you don't have to deal with other people's emotional pain. Yeah. And, and so, uh, and I included on my healing journey, um, you know, a, a counselor professional, somebody professional on dealing with grief Mm. and the stages of grief and things like that. Um, so I know that was a big question and yeah, it now that's so good. a big answer. So yeah. um, I believe in healing teams and I'm, I'm grateful because, and, and let me just say this for those of you that are listening and maybe you're in the middle of a crisis, 
you know, something's happened, you know, you've gotten a phone call and now your life is forever changed mm-hmm. or somebody has died in your life and, you know, you're never going to be with them until heaven. Um, uh, whatever it is, the reality is because God is so good and his nature is so good Hmm. that he will take this difficult season and section of your life. And not only will he heal you from it, from this, Hmm. but he'll even go back and heal other aspects of your life. Hmm. And it's Hmm. like, I don't know how God does it, but he, he makes us better people because of what we've gone through. Yeah. It's like his anointing, his presence, his compassion just drips on us because we've encountered him in the suffering, but we've all also experienced him as our resurrected Lord. Mm, I love that. So good. So good. Such a wonderful reminder that our pain is never wasted. So it's mm. not, it's transformative. Yeah. But we've, we've got to go through the hard part of, you know, the work that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. There's well, one other, I know I'm speaking a no, lot. Go can ahead. I, yeah, can I please. do this? Um, I'm thinking about those of you that might be listening and your pain is from a long time ago. Mm. <laughs> it's from sexual abuse that you never told anybody about or it's from a church that you were hurt at and somehow you just have never quite gotten over it and and so sometimes um there's past stuff and you don't know how to get to it Mm. um one i i just would say to you uh you don't even have to figure it out totally your healing Mm -hmm. that the reality is just walk with God position yourself in places of healing press into you know those appointments with counselors or people that do inner healing or Mm. things like that but believe God that you can be completely free and that your life can be at full capacity and better than ever because that's the goodness of God and that is your inheritance and that's where you're going to be at the other side of this healing journey yeah oh thank you that's so good so so good well I love Sue and appreciate your courage um of challenging and encouraging us to, you know, transform our perspective about healing and, um, and sharing your journey with us. I'd love to know at this point who or what kind of is inspiring courage in you. And, uh, you know, obviously you said you guys have embarked on a pretty, uh, big journey, big adventure, and maybe it's about that. Maybe it's not, but just in general, what is, what is inspiring courage in you or who is inspiring courage in you right now? I did an unusual um, Instagram live um, on Father's Day weekend. And basically I gave a shout out to spiritual dads. Uh And I went back to spiritual dads in my life that have Uh really championed me. Um, And I talked about it and I felt very prompted to do it partly because I am who I am because I had dads that opened the door for me, Mm. you know, in supernatural ways. Mm. Um, But I know that there are many people that they've experienced the opposite of that. Yeah. Mm. Um, And, and so um, you're asking me, I, I think one of the places that have helped me to gain courage is that after I had that encounter with Jesus um, and he said, lay down pastoring and embrace Mm. international travel. I want you to travel to nations and preach the gospel in places that little girls have never heard a woman preach. Mm. You know, so it was a very clear call 
but I felt sadness at let go of pastoring and how do you go about this? So I said to God, I said, God, I need spiritual fathers. Uh I need more than a denomination that has ordained me. I need dads. And part of my heart's cry is uh, Pastor Jack Hayford had been a spiritual dad for me. Mm -hmm. He's now in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I needed a live, active spiritual father to help me because some of what I was navigating was scary and huge and hard. Yeah. Um, and so I think Randy Clark and uh, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado, hmm. those two men, um, and I could mention others like uh, Michael, um, uh, Michael Miller in a different way. Um, but Dr. Randy Clark, Oh my goodness, this man is so humble. Hmm. He's so humble, but he's so personable. And I'm I'm doing a doctorate right now with Global Awakening Theological Seminary. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I would say that process has definitely given me courage. Hmm. And um and Apostle Guillermo Maldonado, I mean, he has that calling to travel into nations. Mm. So I was with him recently in Kenya. Um, and uh, we sat at a table together, a group of us. And he said, he just said the words daughter. Mm. You know, and I, you guys, I'm an older woman. But there's something about dads in our lives that are a big deal Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, moms are a big deal too but they they, they're different we need both yeah we really need both but one of the things that gives me courage is the spiritual dads that have opened the door Mm -hmm. um and i have entered a season of far more than you can hope for or imagine I mean, that's what's so fun is I came home recently and I had had the privilege uh, to prophesy over the wife of the president of Kenya. Wow. Um, I Mm -hmm. prophesied over her last summer and her Mm -hmm. husband was elected in September. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was invited into the state house of Kenya and I got to prophesy over the staff and leaders and Um, but recently I came home from one of those trips and my mom, who's an intercessor, she ran out and she said, you're blowing my mind. I mean, I prayed (laughs) that you would be a prophet to the nation since the time Mm. you were in my womb, but now you're doing things that I never thought of, never dreamed of, never prayed for. Um, and I kind of feel that way. I feel like um i'm hitting that place of things that you know god what are you dreaming for me Mm. god what are you thinking about Mm. so i love that so beautiful well thank you for writing healing rain thank you for joining us for this conversation and like i said a moment ago i just really truly appreciate you encouraging us as well as challenging us to think more broadly, more uh, expansively about healing. So thank you. I am left with just this big weighing thought on me of what our lives would look like if we truly believed in healing. And I'm so grateful for Sue's call to us to have courage to believe that we too can receive healing, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, just gosh, what an impact that that would make to our lives. If we just held that belief a little bit, a little bit stronger. So I'm grateful for that. One topic that Sue and I did not get the opportunity to talk about, but that is in her book. And I really appreciate is she shares seven benefits of rest. And if you've been around me or courage becomes her for 
any length of time, you will know that I am a huge proponent of rest, of true Sabbath rest, and uh, just really believe that our lives can be changed by having a rhythm and a routine that includes rest. So definitely take a look at her book and get her book. Uh, There are so many elements of it that will be helpful to you, but that one in particular of the seven benefits of rest will most definitely be beneficial. Uh, You can go to her website, suebdetweiler.com to get the download that she talked about, the seven keys to divine healing. And the link is in the show notes for her book, Healing Rain, as well as uh, for her website. So thank you so much for joining me today for this conversation with Sue about her new book, Healing Rain. What an honor to help you to cultivate confidence, courage, and joy in your life and work. Thank you so much for inviting me to journey with you. I look forward to being back with you next week where we'll hear another story from a woman whom I love and am inspired by and look forward to learning from.